Hello and welcome to the PTL interviews for the Newton Design Series. I'm here with Douglas Mendes-Ball from the Barbican Project. I'm Kenny Johnston from the OpenStack Innovation Center. Doug, can you start us off by introducing yourself a little bit and telling us about your background with OpenStack? Yeah, sure. So uh, let's see. I've, I've been a racker for about three years uh, and I was a contractor for about six months before that. Uh, and most of my time I've spent working on Barbican. Now this was sort of before Barbican was an OpenStack project. Uh, and prior to this, I didn't have any, any kind of OpenStack experience. So coming in, I, you know, I worked with Jarrett Rehm, who was a previous PTL for Barbican. Uh, and I think I was like the second developer on this. So it was still a lot of that stuff was pretty new. So it was around sort of as we went to incubation uh, and help Jared and the rest of the team sort of go through that process to, to have Barbican become an OpenStack project. Uh, and then when Jared sort of moved on to do other things, I, I followed in his footsteps, so to say, to, um, to lead the project. Uh, and so I've been a PTL for Barbican for about a year and a half now. Uh, and so I, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, with Barbican specifically, maybe not so much with the rest of OpenStack. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like you've been with the project since its infancy, so that's great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what um, Barbican does and who uses it? Yeah, so uh, Barbican is a RESTful service that provides um, key management, right? And so uh, when I talk about keys, I'm talking about stuff like passwords, SSH keys, encryption keys, uh, GPG keys even that people use to sign packages, uh, all sort of sensitive material. Um, that needs to be protected and managed. There's, there's like a life cycle management of these things. Um, and so we, we created Barbican to have a, to, to be the key manager for OpenStack specifically, right? Like we, we de designed the project from day one to be part of OpenStack. Uh, and the idea there was to allow other OpenStack projects to enable security features by using Barbican, right? And so if you think about sort of um, the use case that, that really comes to mind first is that of Swift, uh, which is still sort of in progress. It's been, they have some interesting challenges on their end of things, but the idea was for Swift to be able to provide encrypted storage. And to be able to encrypt uh, sort of at the scale that Swift operates, they would need you know, maybe hundreds and thousands of keys. Uh, you, they probably want to provide you know, distinct or unique encryption keys at least at the user level maybe even at the swift container level uh, and so we designed barbican to be a place where swift could store thousands of keys securely right um, and the system itself is designed with high security in mind and so we wanted to be able to work with devices that are that are specifically defined for secure storage so if you think of HSMs, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, with an HSM. I certainly wasn't before I started working on the project. Uh, but they're purpose-built hardware devices, sort of like one U racks that, that you can rack um, like you would a server. Um, but instead of running a, a normal operating system, they run sort of custom firmware. Uh, in addition, they have custom hardware that, that can do like really fast crypto operations and stuff like that. Uh, one of the interesting features, or, or the, at least that I find really interesting, is the ability to create encryption keys in the system that can never be retrieved out of it. Uh, and so this, you know, if you compare that to encryption done with maybe a key that you store in a file, uh, you can see how, how much or how better the security sort of profile for that would be. Uh, you can't just go in and, and grab this device or whatever and, and plug some else into it and get that stuff out. Um, we also wanted it to be uh, a little bit flexible uh, as far as the deployer goes to be able to choose sort of the hardware device that they prefer or um, be able to do it in software. If, if, so the one sort of the drawback of these HSMs is that they're really expensive. Uh, the ones that we use at Rackspace are, I think, are about $15,000 a unit. Uh, and if you want to have, you know, high availability and stuff like that, you probably need a few of those and then a few for standby in case stuff happens. So it, it can add up real quick. Uh, and so uh, with that in mind, we, we designed a plugin system for the backends for these things. 
uh, and we've got uh, basically three of those um, that that we feel are ready for production use. And one of them is uh, PKCS11, which is a crypto standard. Uh, these devices sort of all speak the same language, so to say, the same protocols. Uh, PKCS11 being one of them, KMIP being another protocol that other devices use. And so we have both of those plugins to be able to connect Barbican to these secure hardware modules. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have a software only backend that can talk to Red Hat's dog tag, which is uh, sort of a, a system in and of itself, but uh, we're leveraging that sort of not try to reinvent the wheel, right? That, you know, Red Hat's already got a pretty good system in dog tag. Um, being the, the, does that sort of answer the question? Uh, it does. So, what, what are we gonna... Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> uh, given that the team just met at the Austin Design Summit, can you tell us some of the priorities for the Newton cycle that the Barbican team is going to be working on? Yeah, so I think uh, one half of the, of the question I didn't answer is who is using it, right? And so um, as of today, Rackspace has a production deployment on it. Uh, we're in early access beta. And so people have to request access to it and then we'll grant access and, and they're able to use it. IBM also has a public beta of a Rackspace or a Barbican deployment. Uh, HP also has a deployment, but I don't think that there's this public facing. I think that you only use it for internal things. Uh, and so as far as the, the Austin summit, uh, I, I'd say probably the most significant change is um, was requested by HP and they wanna be able to operate Barbican with multiple backends. Uh, so I, I did talk about a little bit about the pluggability of the backends, but at, as of the last release, we're limited to only a single backend for deployment. Uh, and what, what the folks at HP want to be able to do is say, you know, for, for these tenants or for these users, uh, maybe they don't need a, a hardware module to be backing the, their usage of Barbican. Uh, and so maybe a software-based one is good enough for them. Uh, and so I would say that's probably the, the, the biggest feature we talked about. Um, another thing we've, we've sort of been kicking around, uh, and it's a significant amount of work, is to um, separate Barbican, or at least some features of Barbican into a separate service. Um, and uh, it, it's specifically the, the ability of Barbican to provision TLS certificates from public CAs. Um, it's, it's a feature that I don't think has really gotten a whole lot of traction in the community. Uh, and so what we talked about this summit of actually deprecating a lot of those APIs so to start preparing to, to remove that from Barbican and then if there is interest from, from other folks to keep that going, maybe make that happen in a separate project. Um, I think those were sort of the major themes. Everything else was sort of, um, you know, more around, oh, we did talk about uh, performance quite a bit. So now that, that IBM and Rackspace are both using this PKCS 11 backend to, to run Barbican at a production level. Uh, we're not seeing sort of the performance we'd like to see for a big cloud deployment. Uh, and so we had a lot of discussions um, around how we can get better performance out of the system. Uh, and it was nice at the summit to actually have uh, a gentleman from Jamalto, which is one of the companies that produces or, or that sells HSMs and it just so happened that both Rackspace and IBM are using their HSMs to back Barbican. Uh, and it was so, so it was really nice to have him sort of on hand to answer questions and give us a little more insight into these, these hardware devices and how we could leverage them better to, or, or different knobs we can, we can tweak to try to get a little better performance out of them. Cool. So one of the things that we've been tracking across OpenStack projects is, is cross-project themes, themes like scalability, resiliency, manageability, modularity, and interoperability. And I'm wondering if you could speak to what work uh, the Barbican team is doing in the Newton cycle with regard to those themes. Wait, so um, scalability, I think I mentioned a little bit. We're, we're, I'd say we're pretty happy with as far as the, the storage uh, scalability of Barbican. Um, at least in one of the plugins, we've, we've devised a scheme in which we, we basically offload all the storage into a database. 
Uh, and so we were able to, to scale the storage sort of as, as big as we need it now. Um, I think uh, performance is definitely going to be a big, big push this cycle. Uh, we're hoping to have good performance numbers to, to compare at the next cycle to see, you know, how to try to get a little better performance out of our, out of our project. Um, as far as resiliency, we, we have been talking about uh, maybe adding more gates um, to our Garrett gates, uh, specifically grenade gates to, to make sure that we are able to provide sort of continuous um, upgrades and, and Barbican. Um, I know uh, definitely at Rackspace, we're striving to have a, a zero downtime if possible, or at least I think five nines is what we're shooting for. Um, and so we're, we're definitely going to be doing some work there. Um, manageability, I'd say, uh, which, which my little cheat notes here say it's about user experience. Uh, I actually had a, I was speaking at a different Rackspace office in Austin yesterday about Barbican or our deployment of it, trying to get some more users. And I got a lot of good feedback from that. Um, there's the, the way in which our client works is a little bit different than most other OpenStack clients. And just, we want to get some work done, maybe the cycle to, to get our client to be a little more in line with the rest of OpenStack. Um, modularity, I, we talked a little bit about um, separating the, the CA certificate provisioning features from Barbican. Um, this was something that, that, Rackspace was pushing for a lot, uh, maybe two, three years ago, uh, but then decided to go in another direction, and there wasn't really a whole lot of traction from any other companies, um, except for Red Hat, but they, they're, I wouldn't say they, they were pushing real hard on it. They're, they're, so it's, it's a feature in Barbican that hasn't seen a whole lot of development in the last couple of cycles, uh, and so I think it would be good for sort of the, the long-term um, health of Barbican to, to get rid of a lot of that stuff, or at least move it into another repo where it could live. Um, and, and I think it would also help with the um, uh, deployment of Barbican. I think it would simplify the deployment of Barbican a lot. Um, as far as interoperability, we, we talked a little bit about, about Federation uh, sort of one of the buzzwords in the security world right now is BYOK for bring your own key. Um, we, we actually talked about that quite a bit in Austin as well. Um, and I think sort of the, the community, well, the feedback we have from the community is that BYOK is a feature that it, it seems a lot of people want, but not necessarily a Barbican feature. Uh, now, it might seem a little weird because, you know, Barbican is the key manager for OpenStack. Why bringing your own key wouldn't, wouldn't have to do with Barbican. But if, if you really think about the feature, it's really more about customers that don't want to give their key material to their cloud provider. They want to keep everything on their side, and they only want to provide it sort of at, at the least amount of time as needed. Uh, and so if we think about we we talked a little bit with the Swift team, uh, and also with the, with the Glance team. And the idea there is like, look, instead of putting Barbican in the middle of this, be able to provide sort of a consistent API, or at least guidelines to have consistent APIs for customers to provide their keys at the time that they request something. Um, and so a good example of that would be, you know, if, if I want to encrypt the container in Swift, I would provide that encryption key that I wanted to be encrypted with every time I send a request to Swift to say encrypt something for me. Um, we, we, we talked about a, sort of a different model for BYOK whereby we would ask both customers to have a Barbican deployment and then the cloud provider to have one as well and then have the cloud provider and that private Barbican sort of establish some sort of link together uh, very much in a, in a federation kind of spirit. But uh, the, the sort of the feel we got from the community was that it wouldn't uh, that wasn't a very compelling sort of model for BYOK. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I think that covers the the five themes, Doug. And um, 
I think that concludes our interview. Thanks a lot for taking the time to give us some insight into what's going on with Barbican this cycle. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.